What's up everybody, Tech Trucker here, and today we are going to review the NECA Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Ultimate April O'Neil figure. This thing was on pre-order for quite some time, and I have to say, over time, I kind of lost interest in it because it just didn't look like NECA was going to listen and make the changes that we were kind of hoping they would. So, you know, it is what it is. It's kind of cool. It's got the hologram, so you can see the little change in that. But let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and crack this thing open and see what the damage is. I sounded a little disappointed in the intro, and I am a little disappointed, but this is figure has some really, really good points to it. The paintwork on the blouse, the vest, the fact that this little brooch-like thing is painted with multiple colors. You've got some gold, you've got some silver. Same with this little clasp up here. Very well done. I love the pattern, the fact that they painted the buttons, her sleeves. You can see the inside as she rolled that up, that, they, that she's got different color for design on the inside, which is awesome. The skirt itself has a pattern. So this is a leather skirt and you can see that, you know, that looks pretty darn good. It's kind of got a speckling to it. She's got a wristwatch, which actually looks pretty darn good. Also, there's looks to be some weathering on this uh, vest. So that all looks good. The hair is sculpted nicely. It's painted a little funky. It looks a little silly ish, but it, it's passable. Now the problems. Her face sculpt, I just, I'm not seeing Judith Hogue in this. I'm not seeing it. And I don't know. This one, this head sculpt, the eyes at least aren't wonky. The other one, the eyes are a little wonky. Oh, you know, whatever. I'll give it to them on that one. That's not as big of a deal. It just isn't quite hitting the likeness, the way that I would have liked for the amount of time that they put into it and the amount of hype that they put into this. I don't know. I feel like it could have been better. Now let's get into the real negative and that's going to be the legs. I am still surprised that they did not fix this from the production pictures that they or the uh, preview pictures. These knees are absolutely atrocious looking. It looks like she's got prosthetic legs and I get it. They're doing it so that they can get some nice articulation. It just, it looks terrible. Then the other piece to this that's disappointing to me is if we turn this around and I posted this on my Instagram, what is going on? These legs are painted this brown. So it's supposed to look like nylon pantyhose. I think the color is too dark. I, I'd have to watch the movie again to see how dark her pantyhose were in the movie. But this tone of brown just seems a little too dark for me. Maybe it's accurate, so I'll give them that. But what was the reason for painting these legs? There is nothing that they needed to show that would have been skin tone. So why didn't they cast this in a tan? Now, maybe I don't know enough about action figure manufacturing, but it sure seems like they could have prevented this butt ugly look by simply casting this in a brown color rather than casting it in the skin tone and then trying to paint over it and having the, the, the typical, you know, hinge paint chipping issue. So that's a huge fail because I mean, even the ankles are doing it. There was no reason for that. And again, it's just too dark of a brown. The, you know, the, the shoes look nice enough. You know, it's nice. She can stand. Uh, it is a little harder to stand her up, but you know, she, she stands relatively well. So in terms of paint and sculpt, I think the sculpt is pretty darn good minus the, the legs. I think that the skirt is really well done. The clothing is really well done. It's really just this issue, which, okay, most of the time you're not going to be looking at her from behind. I do think that her legs, this portion, it's, it's bowing out and it just, that also looks a little weird. It looks a little clunky, but from, I guess, the knees up, she looks pretty darn good. Face sculpt, they could have done a little better on that too. Let's see just how tall she is. She should be right around seven inches. And look at that, she's just about exactly seven inches tall. Let's see how she compares to a Marvel legend. We've got 
Captain America. He's a six inch scale, so obviously he's gonna be considerably shorter. I do think she may be on the tall side, but she does have high heels. Let's see how she looks with Raph. That's actually a pretty good comparison or size there. And then we've got Casey Jones, who is a little bit taller than her, even with the high heels on. So I think that works pretty well. And then let's throw in Super Shredder just because I was able to find him and look at that. Not too bad. I think the scale is actually really, really well done. Let's take a look at the articulation. I'll say it's not too bad considering, but I have noticed that some of the joints are getting a little loose now the more that I am messing with them, but her head is on a double ball peg and she's not really able to look up much with that hair, but this hair is pretty pliable. So it's actually much softer than I was expecting. So it's not too bad. She's able to look down about that far. That's also a little limited, but not a big deal. She can look side to side, no real issues. That hair, like I said, is soft and it does get out of the way. She can tilt her head a pretty deep Decent amount. That's actually not too shabby. I'm happy with that. Shoulders, she's got a ball hinge there. Eh, kind of limited, but I don't know that you need a huge range of motion. She can swivel that all the way around, which is good. She has a swivel both at the bottom of the elbow and at the top, and then she's got those double jointed elbows, which can get a little bit awkward, but she's got pretty good range. It could probably go a little bit further, but I do worry that I'm gonna wind up breaking her, so just be careful with that. Uh, down in the wrist, she's got those wrist hinges. Those work well. The rubber or the plastic is kind of rubbery, um, but it's very, very small. So the little pegs, that's that's a tiny peg. So just be, be careful with that. Down in the torso, it's basically just right at the waist. I don't think there's an actual torso uh, joint of any kind and so she's really only able to crunch forward that far she's able to arch her back only about that far uh, my guess is is if you try and go a little further you're probably going to pop it off and then you'll have to try and pop that back on she doesn't have a lot of side to side but it's 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 not terrible and then of course she does swivel at the waist down in the hips because of the skirt she doesn't have much for range of motion, and I don't think that you really need it anyway, but that's about as far as you're gonna get those uh, legs to do the splits. She can't really kick forward that much, but it's, it's actually not that bad considering the skirt. She can kick back about that far. Uh, again, with the skirt getting in the way, there is a swivel at the knee, and that works okay. Um, it's also at the bottom of the knee, and you know, she's got good range of motion, with that knee, the double, quadruple, whatever the F that is. Again, not impressed with the way that it looks, but it does function. And then down in the ankle, she's got a hinge. She can get her foot back that far. She can get her foot forward that much. And then the ankle rocker is the most problematic that I've found. It's really difficult to get her foot to sit flat on the ground. So I guess articulation wise, that's my biggest gripe is the ankles are you know, they're, they're bowing out number one. And then number two, it just, I don't know if it turns at just the right angle for me, but otherwise I think the articulation is not too bad. And let's take a look at the accessories starting off with her extra hands. She comes with four extra hands, which I, I actually, there's a detail that I think is really cool on this. All of her right hands have a thumb ring, which is really cool. That's a nice detail that they put in here. So this one is for holding her microphone. Then we've got, it looks to be another one for her left hand to be able to hold the microphone, which is kind of cool. And then we've got a pointer finger that is sculpted really nicely. And then last but not least is a fist hand. And then also we've got the two open hands. So Plenty of hands, I think, for this figure. Next is the alternate head that she comes with. So here is her first head, the one that comes on it in the packaging. And then here is the other one. And I have to say, I'm disappointed. Number one, the eyes are a little wonky on this one. And then two, it's just not that different. Really, the only difference is the fact that this one, her mouth is kind of closed. And this one, you can see her teeth just a little bit. I would have liked to have seen something with just a little bit more emotion or something rather than just kind of resting, doing nothing. And then, I mean, really, 
they don't look that much like her. I mean, it's, it's really close. It's really close. It's not enough to really complain that much, but I don't know, something about it is a little bit off, but still, it's very nice to have them. Next accessory that she comes with is her microphone, and this is actually really nice, except for one piece of it. It looks really good. It's sculpted really nicely. The, uh, the microphone actually has some texture on the top of it. It's got the logo for the channel. It's just really nicely sculpted, and the wire is bendable, which is awesome. But here's my issue. It goes to nothing. It, it goes to nothing. Why? Why couldn't they have just given us something? Just a, like a recorder. Uh, a camera, sure, would have been great. But a recorder, some sort of audio thing that it could connect to, would have just really completed it even more. Now, what you can do is you can certainly put this, kind of slide it into the bag so that... You know, it's as though she's got the recorder in the bag, but you know, that just kind of feels a little cheapo. But anyway, I'll, I'll let it go. What I won't let go is this bag. So number one, the bag looks amazing. They really did do a great job with the way that this is painted, except for one thing. And I posted this on Instagram as well. This paint is flaking off really badly. So the, the plastic that they used is fairly pliable and it makes it look like you could open this up. Uh, just know, the more that you bend this around, this paint is gonna start flecking off. So you can see there's a big chunk of it missing right there. It's a great paint job, but this paint is not durable whatsoever. Again, the bag is awesome. This, this strap is bendy. The, the fact that we've got the leather sides here looks awesome, but this paint is not gonna stay on. Maybe mine is just really bad and the rest of them are better, but this one, I, it's, a, it's a big fail because you can't do much with it if the paint's gonna all be coming off. So that, that's a big disappointment. What isn't a disappointment is this stack of pizza boxes. This is just awesome and it's really heavy. I mean, this thing is super heavy. I really love this accessory. There's really nice detail on the boxes itself. I just think that they did a great job with this. I love this accessory. It's one of those just fun things to have to be able to throw in with your display. And then we also have Raph's extra sigh uh, because you know she threw that into her purse. Now, unfortunately, because I am not comfortable with that purse, you, you can kind of slide it in, but good luck with that. And then last but not least, she comes with this really cheesy, cheapo stand. Uh, it, well, maybe it's not cheap. It, it feels actually pretty thick, so I'll, I'll retract that. This is an, it's a nice stand. It's tiny though. I would have maybe liked it to be a little bit bigger so that uh, she wouldn't lose her balance or anything like that, but it's still nice. But what I would have really liked overall with this figure, is a few things that they would have changed because for the price tag, those of you that actually pre-ordered this on uh, NECA's um, website, you had to pay the shipping. And I think I paid 16 bucks for shipping and she was, I think it was like 29 or 34 some bucks. So overall, I think I paid 40 some bucks for this. Do I think that she's this figure is worth 40 bucks? No, I don't. I think they used too soft a plastic for her, for her ankles or her legs. I think the paint issues that they've got, the fact that the knees look kind of stupid, the fact that the, the face sculpt, it's almost there, but not quite. I don't feel like I got my money's worth, though I do think that there's some really, really good aspects to this. So don't, don't get me wrong, it's not 100% of a loss. It's just kind of disappointing. There were some things on there that I thought that people really got the point across online that, God, fix those knees. What's up with the face sculpt? That I don't feel that NECA really listened to it to say, hey, maybe we'll adjust this just a little bit before going to production. So that kind of disappoints me and the price that we had to pay, 40 some bucks, uh, I don't know. The fact that this accessory feels incomplete, I don't know. I don't know how I feel. So let me know in the comments, how do you guys feel about yours if you got one? Are you glad that you skipped out if you didn't get one? Uh, did you go with the really expensive $100, uh, you know, commemorative set? 
How do you feel about that? Let me know in the comments. Hit the like button if you like this review. If you didn't, go ahead and hit the dislike, that's fine. Hit the subscribe button, the bell notification, and I will see you in the next video.